Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Happy Monday to all of you. And a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Jason, Keith, Peter, Kevin, Clayton, Alexander, Lloyd, Frank, and Tim. Thank you all very much for the support. It's greatly appreciated. In case you missed it, remember how Elon was selling his shares in those 934,091 share blocks? Well, that number was oddly close to the 2021 production and delivery figure. So was Elon trying to foreshadow something? We know this is something that he likes to do. We'll probably never know, but I thought it was interesting. And it's not Friday yet, but I had to show you Tesla up almost 13% on the day, trading near $1,200 per share. So I was talking on Twitter to some people saying that I do think Tesla should hit $1,250 per share, putting in a new all-time high sometime in the next few weeks after the numbers yesterday. Well, I might be horribly wrong as it might be just a few days. We'll see what the week entails, but it's off to a very good start. The simple answer for why is because most of Wall Street, as we talked about, is adjusting their estimates and their projections with these new Tesla numbers. And look, guys, if you think that this is exciting, wait until Tesla's financials come out if... And it's a big if, if their financials and the margins are as good as we think they should be from this blowout quarter four, then things should get really, really interesting when it comes to what Wall Street's gonna do with these numbers. And we should get those financials somewhere around January 24th. This tweet from Joe was a few days ago, but I think some of you may have missed it. So in case you did, actual production for Giga Texas is supposedly starting this week. They're driving finished cars inside the factory already and several completed cars are at testing sites out of state getting crashed and other testing completed from a source on site. Here we get some insight from Pierre Farragut as to why Wall Street may have been so far off with their Tesla estimates. He said, the street is slow and has a cautious bias. Nobody wants to look like a fool, bullish on deliveries. The street did react to Elon's email about not rushing the end of quarter deliveries, which is fair, and remained cautious and missed monster deliveries in China that went public only last week. And this might sound crazy, but I would actually take the Tesla community and its depth of understanding over Wall Street estimates any day of the week, and I don't think it's that close, not just because of the quarter four projections and where our Tesla community was versus where Wall Street was, but for so many other reasons. Let me know, am I the only one or would you guys agree? And don't get it twisted, I am not saying that there's no Wall Street analyst that can add any value to the Tesla conversation because they absolutely can. I'm just saying that the Tesla community is very special and I'm very grateful for it. So let's run through this first wave of Wall Street adjustments. The first one everybody was waiting for from JP Morgan and Ryan Brinkman up from 250 to 295 per share. <laughs> well done, Ryan. Here we have some very bullish signaling from Adam Jonas and Morgan Stanley talking about 2 million units possible for next year, which I do think is on the table. Now, I do not want expectations to get carried away. I'm just saying it's in the realm of possible outcomes. They said, while not disclosed by the company, we estimate there is as high as a 2000 basis point or a 20% gross margin differential between Fremont and Shanghai with Shanghai closer to 40%. And I really enjoyed this paragraph. The Tesla we see today, even with the fourth quarter result, largely reflects the pre-COVID Tesla that was operating on more of a shoestring budget and had yet to deliver consistent profit and cash flow. We think in 2022, investors will witness the emergence of a different Tesla organism from the chrysalis of self-inflicted struggle. And chrysalis is basically just a transitional state. I believe Morgan Stanley is keeping the price target at 1200 as they're going to wait for the financials to make any adjustments. Jeffries reiterated its buy rating and has a $1,400 price target, didn't really add anything new with the commentary. Alex Potter from Piper Sandler said the current Wall Street expectation for 1.3 million deliveries in 2022 saying Tesla could achieve this target even if the company stopped adding capacity, which is unrealistic. In light of the strong Q4 result, our own 2022 estimate of 1.38 million deliveries is probably also too low. We will provide a model update before the company reports full quarter four results sometime in late January. And KGI bumps from 1,000 to 1,480 per share. And you guys know I love to highlight people that are doing great work. Forward Cap put together an excellent thread on Tesla's margins. I will link 
it below. It's too long to go over all of it. I'll just read the first and last tweet. There are four key margin drivers over the next two years, new factories, internal battery production, average sale prices, and deferred revenue recognition. And the concluding point, Tesla just posted the highest gap EBIT, 14.6% and auto gross margins of 30.5% by any major auto OEM in any quarter in the last 25 years. Since this is unprecedented, analysts once again are being conservative, a theme to remember, by not assuming much margin expansion, I think they'll be proven wrong. The thread provides plenty of data to back up that thesis. Shifting gears a bit, this user on Reddit shared a horrific FSD beta experience in the snow. Now I'm not going to read this, I'll link it below, and you can also pause and read on the screen if you'd like to, but I wanted to ask you guys, have you had any experience with FSD in the snow and how has it been? I genuinely want to hear your experience. And yes, this is somewhat selfish because I live in a snowy climate, so I'm very curious. Here we have a good question on Reddit. How does Tesla use its second electric motor? Basically, what is the power split for normal driving? Basically asking, does the car always split the power equally between motors? Now the short answer is no, most of the power usually is coming from the rear motor, but there were two answers I'd like to highlight. Word 3R said 99% of the time, Tesla is rear wheel drive, only when applying more than 30% acceleration on the pedal or if traction is lost, or if you need to preheat the battery, the front motor is used. And just the first paragraph from IQ is overrated. The front is an induction motor. The rear is a permanent magnet synchronous motor. So you can't really switch the rear one off. If you do, the magnets will still move past the coils and cause an induced current, which will lead to a braking force in the motor. That's where you get regenerative braking. So in most driving conditions, Tesla's are rear wheel drive. It looks like we might be getting heated wipers coming to the Tesla Model 3 and Y in China. And then eventually you would assume they'll come to the States as well. This was an exclusive feature to the Model S and it's not actually going to be the windshield wiper itself that has a heating element. It's just the windshield will have a heating element where the wipers sit when they are not activated. Apparently Tesla owners MA was provided a picture from a source who works at Tesla China and here is the image. And Tesla is still testing the new feature on manufacturer units so this has not made it to production yet. And check this out, Tesla is Norway's best selling car of all categories, not just electric vehicles. Among among the 10 most bought car models last year, Tesla Model 3 is by far the most purchased with over 12,000 cars sold in 2021. That's far more than the next car on the list, Toyota's hybrid RAV4 with just under 9,000 units sold. In total, eight of the 10 most purchased cars in 2021 were all electric cars. This is great. Tesla also accounted for just over 20,000 of the newly purchased cars in 2021 and is one of Norway's most purchased car brands in the year. Sticking with this theme, the Model 3 is the number one selling car in Switzerland, which yes again, includes ICE vehicles for 2021. Model 3 coming in with 5,072 and second place was the Skoda Octavia with 4,960. And in response to this news, Elon is celebrating saying yay Switzerland. It looks like IG Metall is opening an office in Grunheide. Job interviews, employment contracts, and everyday work, the IG Metall union wants to support around 12,000 Tesla employees in the future, the estimated employment figure for Giga Berlin with time. The IG Metall district manager said, of course we also support the works council election and we are available for union questions, remuneration, length of working hours, shift issues and so on. And she said with regard to the transformation taking place in the area, it's necessary to take the employees with you. Should there one day be a collective bargaining between the union and Tesla, a point of contention would already be foreseeable. And remember, Ige Metall has dealt with Tesla in the past. When Tesla was acquiring Groman Engineering, Ige Metall became one of the biggest critics of the deal, claiming that Tesla's incentives for the site's employees were below par. However, it should be noted, Tesla Groman employees rejected Ige Metall, deciding instead to form their own internal bargaining unit. And if any of you out there can help us Americans understand Ige Metall and its role, please let us know below. Arash shared a really cool picture saying, Tesla mirrors have amazing clarity, like noticeably better than any car he's experienced, but just wanted to give him a shout out for this great photo. Remember a few weeks back when Tesla was in hot water for not recognizing emergency lights? Well, they did an OTA update and here is a video of that implementation working in real life.
And just something to keep in the back of your mind here, Tesla just opened a new showroom in Xinjiang, which is currently at the center of some genocide allegations. And to be clear, this is not a reflection on Tesla, it's just where they have opened the showroom, there have been some allegations of some things going on. And Tesla started operations at this showroom in Urumqi, the capital of Xinjiang, on December 31st. And just so you know the allegations that have been made, authorities in Xinjiang have detained as many as a million Uyghurs and members of other Turkic Muslim minority groups. There are reportedly things like mass surveillance, forced labor, and stringent birth controls. The US government, along with some lawmakers from other Western countries, have said these policies amount to a form of genocide. And in December, President Biden signed into law new rules banning most imports from Xinjiang over concerns of the forced labor. And I wanted to mention something from this Twitter poll. Looking through the comments of what people think the Tesla stock low will be in 2022, the lowest number I saw was $740 per share, and most people were actually $1,000 or higher. All I wanted to highlight is, look, no matter how great Tesla's deliveries and margins and financials turn out to be, Tesla will still be slave to the macro environment. So if there are unexpected things, or if something like Elon's prediction of a recession in the summer of 2022 turns out to be true, then Tesla could indeed see some levels below 1,000 and maybe even below 700. And hey, I'm not at all saying this is likely. I just want all of us to be ready and prepared for anything. I just think it's really easy as a Tesla fan to get caught up in the hype, especially in times like this when things seem so good and to just assume that Tesla is gonna go straight up to the moon in terms of stock price, but that's usually not how things work. So just be prepared. And in that event where Tesla has a pullback, just remember it's gonna be a great buying opportunity. And the last thing for today, this was a great tweet from Whole Mars. That was then, their promises now are rock solid. Mercedes promising to electrify its entire fleet by 2022, this back September of 2017. So that's all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a great day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.